14 of the fantasy basketball season and now the trade deadlines they're approaching or they've passed already but this is the last week you can make trades in your fantasy leagues and here's a few guards i would look to buy low and try to trade for this week the first guy is alonzo ball of the new orleans pelicans so ball he's been banged up the last few weeks with a hip flexor but right now he's questionable for tonight's ball game versus the orlando magic and on the season ball he's been pretty solid ranked 72nd in fantasy basketball 14.2 points a game 4.2 rebounds 5.6 assists 1.3 steals three threes a game 76 percent from the foul line and 42 percent from the field so alonzo ball his numbers each and every season since he got into the nba they've definitely gone up for lonzo and lonzo he's a good ball player and he's going to get a big contract this offseason either from the pelicans or someone else i thought at the trade deadline lonzo ball was going to get traded but that just wasn't the case here they traded jj reddick instead was this pelican team and now ball he's going to come back here tonight possibly and he's a player i definitely would look to buy low he hasn't played in a ball game now here since march 18th at the Portland Trailblazers and Ball, the percentages have gone up. And his three-point shooting's been pretty good this season. Like I said, averaging three a game. And right now with the injury, there's probably some Lonzo Ball owners who are definitely frustrated. And right now, while he's been out the last five ball games, this is the time to go out there and get him until he comes back and then puts up good games. So right now, if it's on the brink of your deadline and you got to make a deal for a guard, Lonzo Ball's definitely a player I would target, and I don't think you got to break the bank to get him. The second guard's Kobe White of the Chicago Bulls. So Kobe White, he missed his first game of his young NBA career the other day with a neck injury, and Kobe White, he's only in his second year in his career is White. On the season, he's ranked 164 in fantasy basketball, 15 points a game, 4.6 rebounds, 4.6 assists, 2.3 threes a game, 89% from the foul line, and an awful 40% from the field to Kobe White. He was one of the guys I thought this season would have a breakout season in his second year in the NBA. But so far, it's been a lot of up and downs and growing pains for the second year. Kobe White, in the last couple weeks, his numbers, they've dropped down as well. 11.6 points a game, 3.2 rebounds, 3.2 assists, 1.8 threes a game, and 39% from the field to White. He's missed the last two games with the neck injury. And the numbers, they just haven't been up to par, like I mentioned here for White, over the last two weeks here. But right now, with the new additions in Chicago, with Nikola Vukovic, obviously Daniel Tice, and also Zach Levine, who's been there now a couple of years. White's numbers, they might take a little bit of a drop, obviously, in the scoring category. But I think his assists could go up. I even think his shooting percentage could go up. It can't go any more down from here that he's only shooting 41% on the season. So Kobe White, you definitely don't have to break the bank for him. And he's a player I definitely would target and try to trade for. The next guard's Malik Beasley of the Minnesota Timberwolves. So Beasley here, he's back after that 12-game suspension. He's been back now, Beasley, the last three ball games. That the Timberwolves have played and on the season he's ranked 99th in fantasy basketball 20 points a game 4.4 rebounds 2.4 assists 3.5 threes a game 85 percent from the foul line and 44 percent from the fields from Malik Beasley and since he returned now it's been pretty good the last three games March 27th versus Houston 13 points four rebounds three assists two steals and three threes March 29th at the Brooklyn Nets it was a down game Nine points, one rebound, four assists, three threes. And last night versus the New York Knicks, it was a huge ball game for him in a game where the Minnesota Timberwolves came back from 18 and won 20 points, five three pointers, a rebound, an assist, a steal, and a block. So Malik Beasley, we know he's just a pure scorer. And we saw it last season when he got traded to Minnesota, him have some big ball games with Beasley. And now he's back. D'Angelo Russell, he's still out. So Beasley, he's going to get a lot of opportunities and a lot of chances to shoot the ball. And right now, this is the last week to get him. And I still don't think you got to give up much to get him. He had two mediocre games and a good one last night versus the Knicks. So right now, I would go out there and try to get Beasley because I think his usage is going to be high. And like I said, D'Angelo Russell, there's no timetable for his return yet. The next guard is Goran Dragic 
of the Miami Heat. So Drogic, he's another guy who's been out for a while. And he just returned the other night, New York Knicks. And then played last night at the Indiana Pacers on the season. He's ranked 210 on the season's Drogic. 13.5 points a game. 3.3 rebounds. 4.7 assists. 1.63s, 84% from the foul line, and 44% from the field. But the last couple weeks, obviously, he's been out, he's Drogic. And the numbers have been down as well, 10.7 points a game, 3.3 rebounds, 2.3 assists, 1.33s in the few games he played. So Goran Drogic, he's been dropped in a couple fantasy leagues as well. And he's actually available in 49% of fantasy leagues, but Drogic... He's a player that's going to have a, still a pretty big role on this Heat team. I know they got Victor Oladipo in a deal, and he's yet to debut, but tonight he will debut is Oladipo versus the Golden State Warriors in a primetime ball game. So Drogic here, he's a good ball player, no doubt about it. And right now his value is at an all-time low, and I think if he, as long as he stays healthy, he's a player that can help your fantasy team and contribute. And you got you don't have to give up much to get him. And you could easily pick him up on your waiver wire as well in the fifth and final guard. I would look to buy low or trade for this week's Joe Harris of the Brooklyn Nets. So Harris here, he's a forgotten man over there in Brooklyn, especially when all these guys play. And once Kevin Durant plays, once Blake Griffin and Aldridge get into the thick of things, he's going to be the fifth or sixth option on this Brooklyn Nets team. On the season, he's ranked 92 in fantasy basketballs, Harris, 14.5 points a game, 3.5 rebounds, 1.7 assists, 3.3 threes a game, 51% from the field, and 72% from the foul line in the last couple weeks for Harris. The numbers they've dropped, like you would expect, with Blake Griffin over there and Harden just getting better and better in this net offense, 12.4 points a game, 3.4 rebounds, 1.7 assists, 2.7 Threes a game, 42% from the field and 83% from the line. So Harris, we know he's a three-point sharpshooter. And right now, he's just in a little bit of a slump with only shooting 42% because on the season, he's shooting a great 51%. And the last couple games for Harris, besides last night, haven't been great. March 26th at Detroit, nine points, two rebounds, three assists, two threes. March 29th versus the Minnesota Timberwolves, seven points. Six rebounds, an assist, two steals. And then last night versus the Houston Rockets, 28 points, six rebounds, and seven threes. So Harris, he was in a slump. But last night versus the worst team possibly in the NBA versus the Rockets, he went off with the seven three-pointers and the 28 points. And this is what he's going to do for fantasy teams. He's going to hit threes. He's a decent rebounder. And he's got decent percentages as Harris. So he's a player I would definitely want on my roster and just because he had one big game last night, I don't think his value is still that high. And I would go out there and get him. So that's a few guards I'd look to buy low in a trade and try to get here in week 14 of the fantasy basketball season.